what's up everybody? It's your boy the Kryptonian Saiyan here bringing you a review for One Piece chapter 504 and this is one of those chapters where I think Oda's setting some stuff up for the future. I think he set up a lot of stuff and I got so many questions because the wheels are just turning at this point and one of the things I think he's setting up is a possible reunion with father and son with Luffy and his father Dragon because one of the things that the Admirals say when they're kind of speaking amongst themselves and before Kizaru uh, decides to leave or Kizaru. I haven't checked the anime scene for that so I'm going to maybe butcher that for a second but Here's what's really interesting. He says, what's going on with that bloodline? And we know that Luffy, the Eans Lobby stuff, basically declared war on the world government. You have Luffy's father, who is at war, war with the world government. And then you have his brother Ace, who's a part of the Whitebeard Pirates. Ace is about to be executed. So it's like, okay, this whole family, this whole bloodline screwed up. And I thought that that was kind of cool to see it. But where that would turn into a whole thing with Luffy meeting his father is, what if Luffy uses what goes on here at the auction hall as a way to finally see the world government as dogs, as scoundrels. I think he's been forming that opinion, especially with his encounters on Ian's Lobby with CP9. And I love those CP9 cover stories, by the way. I think that's pretty cool. But also, Luffy just saw someone being auctioned. And I have a feeling that when this Admiral shows up, we might hear the auction hall that's used to sell slaves be referred to as a uh, government employment assistance hall yet again. And it just shows you because in that chapter, one of the things you see is they first refer to it as a slave auction then they give it that politically correct name. And I like how Oda is just hinting that government corruption, yeah, it exists here in the One Piece world, but guess what? It exists in the real world too. And this is one of those instances where art imitates life, and I like how that was kind of incorporated in there. And just speaking of incorporating, I like how uh, Oda just kind of slipped in there the huge scheme for the world government, because we know from Luffy's grandfather, Garp, that the world government is planning something big, and he said something about two legends, and I'm assuming the other one is Whitebeard, because... One of the things Doflamingo says, and you know how I feel about some Doflamingo, man, because when I first got into One Piece, uh, a friend of mine, before I even started reading, kept saying, you're going to love Doflamingo. I love the dude's design. I like how when he showed up, you know, he basically made Bellamy look like fodder. I love that. But Doflamingo is just sitting there, and he's got like the cup of tea, right? He's sitting, he's sitting on the chair, drinking the tea, and he's just like, look, you know what's about to happen, right? All this stuff with the shops and stuff, that's so yesterday. That's so yesterday, man. Look, we're getting on to the next thing right here. We're getting on to Whitebeard's crew, seven warlords. It's going down, man. 12-round fight. Like, I love the fact that Doflamingo is basically saying that the world government's going to use the seven warlords to attack Whitebeard's pirate crew. And that's pretty ballsy. And, and if that is what's going to happen, the fact that I think Whitebeard, isn't Whitebeard one of the four emperors? So if this is the case, okay? If this is the case, and they're about to go into the new world, if this is what's going to happen, then Oda just hinted way back, like maybe five chapters ago, so I guess not way back, but five chapters ago when the lady uh, that was uh, ripping everybody off, I think Shaki, one of the things she said was... When the rookies get to the new world, it's going to be bloodshed. Oh, well, okay, now we have it. Like, the Whitebeard Pirates and Luffy's going to be right there in the mix of things. Right there in the mix of it. Because he's going to find out what's going on with his brother. And Luffy's going to go balls deep when it comes to trying to save his brother. Just like he did with Nico Robin. And I, like, like if you guys go back to the chapter reviews, I got Ian's Lobby mixed up. I thought Ian's Lobby, I know, idiot moment. But I thought Ian's Lobby was actually the Navy headquarters. So we're going to see Luffy busting the Navy headquarters to try and save his brother. Oda, like, that's just raising the stakes right there, man. That's just totally raising the stakes. But what's going to be really key is the fact that if the world government is going to, one, try to capture Raleigh, who was the right-hand man of Roger, but then at the same time go to war with one of the four emperors and potentially eliminate Whitebeard, now you see it where now they're starting to first take out the emperors and then work their way to Luffy's father and the fact that Shanks basically runs a whole set of islands his damn self 
Luffy has that connection. So now you see where the threads might be kind of connecting. So, I mean, this is going to be key, man. This is going to be really key. I, more than anything else, I want to see Luffy interact with Shanks. I could care less about his father because I don't know as much about him. But I think there is a connection with his father and uh, Kuma because Kuma did make the reference on uh, Thriller Bark to I, I see why he's your son. Now, the other thing is the actual auction hall itself. I like how you see all the people, they're telling them like, hey, we got these mortars out here. I'm going to start firing cannonballs at your ass. You need to chill out, release the royal, uh, the celestial, the celestial dragons. Let, let them out. and We can't be responsible for what's going to happen. And I love the fact that one of the things that we see is Luffy and the other rookies, okay, the captains, basically look at it and they say, okay, hey, you stay back. Luffy's not like, look, dumbass, I told you to stay back. And you got this dude, Law. This dude, Law, is just so chill, right? Law got that sword out. And he's just like, look, man. It's like, like Law packing right now. Like, Law's just like, look, you need to, you don't tell me to do nothing. I do what the fuck I want to do. I love the fact that that's what you see out of Law, man. And you just see it where the rest of the Straw Hats are looking around and they're going, hey, okay. Luffy's, Luffy's getting into it. Let's just bust our way through the defenses. I think that was Zoro who suggested it. And Sanji doesn't hesitate. And in the background, you got Nico Robin. Nico Robin's just kind of smirking. And she's just like, yeah, I'm about to fuck some stuff up. Like, I love that the Straw Hats are this crazy and wonky. And one of the people who's going to be auctioned off actually says, if we see each other again, I'll be sure to repay you. So it's one of those instances where, again, Luffy... It's building up his legend. There are witnesses. You know, if you're familiar with the NBA, like I hate LeBron James, but one of the things that LeBron has for his marketing campaign is we are all witnesses, right? And that's what's happened with Luffy. Everybody is a witness. And so the further Luffy goes, more people are going to know who he is. And that's one of the things that you see where I think it's gluttony. One of the things she says is she's like, Mosshead is a, and she didn't call him Mosshead, but she, no, I'm just doing a poke fun at Zoro. But she says Mosshead was an idiot, but his captain was a bigger idiot. And everyone's just trying to get the hell off the island before the Admirals show up. And what's really cool about this is the fact that Raleigh is just so chill. So chill about the fact. And he says, hey, if we get separated, I think he said, let's meet up on island number 13. But Luffy and the others, they don't care what's getting ready to happen. They're about to bust their way through. They've got some giants helping them out. And when they go out there, the Navy guys are all calling out the bounties. And I love the fact that Luffy and the other two start showing off the devil fruit powers. Did not expect the other two to have devil fruits. And what's really cool out of all of it, I, I really love the fact that it looks like Law actually cut someone's head off. And I don't know if it's one of those things where maybe Law kind of sliced and didn't actually cut his head off, but it kind of swished his head with another object. I, it, w whatever happened there it was so cool. That was the most powerful, in my opinion, out of everything, because it basically means it can attack you from a distance. And there's no type of issues, no getting around that. But everyone's kind of freaking out. They say, oh, they all have devil fruit power. So if this is the case, I'm wondering. Can these three actually overpower an admiral? Because I know Aokiji was strong as hell. I mean, when the dude showed up, now Aokiji had like the little afro kind of coming out, you know, had the natural hair going, you know, big tall black dude, you know, your big old brother kind of swole like Luke Cage came through. Like, ah, uh, ah, uh, get up out my way. I love that's what you see out of Aokiji. And then he just freezes the whole fucking ocean. Like it's nothing all the way down to the ground. And just casually rides a bike across that shit. Like, Al Kiji, like, when it comes to all the admirals, right? I don't know much as far as Al Kiji's personality. I feel like he's still a little bit of an enigma. Al Kiji's like Debo in this bitch, man. You know, if you go all the way back to Friday, the movie, you know what I'm talking about. Like, Al Kiji, when you see Al Kiji on that bike and he's kind of going side to side, you know shit getting real. And that's what's happening. I thought maybe Al Kiji was going to show up. I'm like, I would love to see Luffy versus Aokiji again to just kind of gauge where Luffy's gotten to because I think Gear 2 and 3 is probably going to get fodderized by him. But if he's got two other people helping him out, maybe he can overpower Aokiji. Maybe. And if that happens, like they're going into the new world with such a, a such amount of weight to their name. Like, like right now, they knew, people know who they are, but they'll know who they are. 
So my chapter question to you guys is going to be out of all three captains who display devil fruit powers, whose devil fruit were you most impressed with and why? But as always, guys, if you like anything I had to say, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching the, end of the video, guys. Have an awesome day.